Okay, now the microphone is working. Seems to have had some issues. Now it's all solved. Let me turn off the noise on because it seems to be very noisy. Okay, since it's not seven yet, I'll wait a few more minutes. everybody but I'm going to do most of the installation live so it's going to take a little while but not too much so I'll be ranting in the meantime just to keep everybody entertained This time, hopefully, there should be no siren happening because, yeah, I'm, it's going to be very interesting trying to have sirens at this height. Well, it is 7 p.m. The fan is off. working so let's start fun fact um, the background cannot be changed it's synced from some time ago this is not the current desktop background on my normal install because this is not activated it doesn't let me change it nice picture it took very randomly outside of the um, Google office in San Francisco, I think. Um, just happened to be there. So, clean Windows 10 install. I did the install, very clean install. I did the install before all of this. I don't care about completing the setup, but never mind. Can I close this? Yes. It's nothing to see, but it's nothing to see. I literally just did a standard install of Windows 10. Microsoft does provide a development VM that you can pre-select and set up. And I was tempted to try that, but then I was like, that's going to be already set up beforehand. Um, and the request I had was to pretty much walk through my standard setup of Windows 10 for development, because as I said a few months ago, Windows 10 starts to feel more developer friendly than Mac OS, at least to me. Um, I've never been a big fan of macOS in the past 10 years, I want to say. I used to be, it used to be very well... They used to pay a lot of attention to the details and everything was very well integrated and everything looked like it was going to work fine. But in the past, well, okay, maybe not 10 years, let's call it 7 years. Um, I just didn't feel I was a user. It seemed to be the, the development experience was getting worse and worse, at least to me. Um, somehow, like random parts of it still feel sluggish, even on the most powerful computer you get out of their store, um, which I found not for personal stuff, but for work stuff. Um, I cannot stand the Mac App Store. I'll be very honest. I still, every time I load the Mac App Store, it feels I'm going back 10 years on the slugginess of it. So, yeah. That's a short version of why I don't like Mac OS. And instead, I found myself using Windows 10. I found myself using Visual Studio and Python on Windows 10 helping my wife. And I was like, this looks interesting enough and since I do use Windows 10 on this machine 
not the virtual machine, but the machine I'm actually streaming from, um, for games and photos. I was like, okay, let me give it more of a try. And then it turned out to be a lot better experience than I expected. And so I ended up buying a new um, license for Windows 10 for my laptop. And I just decided, hey, I'm going to use Windows 10 to try to, to develop open source software. I do have my Win my Linux workstation, well, desktop. It's a Intel NAC, fairly powerful, fairly handy, plenty of space, and it's running there on my desk all the time. But it's just not as handy if I'm just switching between Chrome and something else. If I'm just going and looking at the various websites, I mean, like the, the, the utilities and the mail and the doctor and stuff like that, I don't really need all of the power of Linux. And then sometimes it will just randomly crash, which is annoying. Um, so I, gave, I pretty much gave up on all of that. I don't want the git bash here. So the good thing about the git installer, by the way, it asks you a lot of things, but only the first time. Not, like every upgrade just goes, I'll ask you the question that you haven't answered before. So yeah, this that's fine. Um, and yeah, just use Visual Studio code. It kind of goes before that. So let's do Visual Studio code first. And in the end result is I have a nice laptop that works fairly well on either Linux or Windows, um, except for the battery. Battery life is horrible. It's a Dell XPS 9360. Um, and using it on Windows with the various remote access and WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux, they actually felt very natural. And so I ended up just doing that. And Visual Studio Code being the mostly open source editor from Microsoft with a lot of nice features. And the annoyingly dark theme by default, I, let me change that right away. I don't want setting sync right now, no. Never remember. Cool thing. And I'll go for light blast. Let me go on a round, given that we have time to spend on this. I have an issue with dark mode everything. Like, I cannot use anything in dark mode. You can see this is in light mode. I have behind me the chat from the OBS Streamlabs, um, which is dark, and I don't like dark mode. The reason for that is not any particular, like, hacker, non-hacker style of things. It's just my eyes have a very hard time, and I mean it, reading white text on dark black ground. And I know that for many people, the opposite is true. I never understood why this is the case, and it's not going to change. It's not going to change today. It's not going to change in 10 years, most likely. I do check for the Git updates. And because of that, I always try to find a way to disable that theme. I am going to override that. Git from the command line and also from third party. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Use native Windows because why are you even asking? Yeah, check out Aziz. Commit Unix style is easier. Use Mint AI, default console window. I don't want the Mint API. It's a lot of questions. Uh, yeah, the new one. And no, I don't need the symbolic links. Mm, yeah. Yeah, no, never mind. Um, it's a lot of questions. And that was one of the things that Andrea Berizani was complaining about 
why is it doing like why is it asking so many questions if on Linux it doesn't ask so many questions? And I feel for it. I agree. It's not the best user setup experience. But the installers on Windows tend to be more for the um, the, 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 the wizards more for the user and intended to be for the user and to see the users. If you are a system administrator setting up this for many people, you're not going to do it this way. You're going to use the NSI install and just say, hey, I want this thing and here's all my configuration. Please go ahead. Um, I wonder if I can actually start the store from here. Let's see. And then configuring them is a pain otherwise. On the right side, Python 3.9, you install it straight from here. This one asks no question, you just need to have Microsoft Store, it's logged in. I swear I still haven't found any decent way to, yes, I own this app, it, it's going to install. No. You can see these are the two computers. Okay, let's see. Yeah, okay, it is installing it. Very uh, slowly. And these are all the updates it wants to run. I don't want the updates right now. There we go, yes. <sighs> Just get kept updated by Windows. Um, like I don't, there is no particular reason one way or another in my opinion, except for the fact that it's one last thing that I need to remember where to download from and make sure I keep updated. This one updates by itself. It doesn't update across minor versions, so you're not going to get 3.10 if you have 3.9 installed or 3.9 if you have 3.8, but all the minor versions are just updated with the rest of the system. And again, it's just handier. I actually wish Git and more stuff would be installable that way because why not? Um, I'll get to Windows Terminal in a moment more and then the next one that you do need to install from here and I'm going to use Ubuntu because why not? I usually use OpenSUSE um, It all integrates anyway so everything is You'll see once I start Visual Studio Code, it will find Python, it will find Git, it will find Ubuntu. I need to actually activate Windows Subsystem for Linux as well. So, PowerShell. this yet? No? Oh yeah, OpenSSH client is installed. Um, oh yeah, fun fact. I usually use the YubiKey for my SSH authentication, um, which for various reasons I ended up installing the beta version of OpenSSH built for Windows by Microsoft. But since I'm using Hyper-V to do the virtualization for this install, I cannot actually forward it. So I cannot actually show that part as much, but it'll still show SSH, but not with my um, YubiKey. That was very confusing because I did expect the, the USB forwarding to be there, but given that USB forwarding is always difficult, I'm not entirely surprised. Um, so yeah. And this is WSL2. I don't need the update, but I do need to set it as default, I guess. Hmm. Oh, wait, it is not enabled yet. Uh, 
Franconia, I need to restart. Do a restart. I've actually been exchanging brands about Mac OS lately with a friend who recently had a work Mac. And I... <laughs> I've had the workman, Mark workman. I still have it. It's behind me somewhere. I haven't turned it on now for a couple of months since we moved here. They should probably do that before they kick it off the network. So probably worth doing this week. But they stopped using it because I got it and it didn't really like my USB-C dock. So I got a new USB-C dock for it and it worked fine until they ran an, a new update for Catalina, I think they want to say. The previous version worked fine with my dock, but broke a number of other docks. The new update fixed the other docks, but broke mine. And I was like, oh, come on. And so I kind of gave up on that. And eventually I asked for a Windows workstation. Because, again, I find myself more comfortable with it than with other stuff. So PowerShell would be nice to have a Windows, uh, sorry, a Linux workstation for work, but COVID and no offices running makes things complicated. And I hope everybody is safe and not like struggling because I know that it's hard for me still. I need to run these things still despite having it installed already. Oh well. If I do end up sharing this on YouTube eventually I'll add on the liner notes all the links to the stuff I've been going through. Like all of it is documented on my side. Because I said I did a partial dry run of this, so I know it should all work fine, but partial. And I think in the last one I just did this one, and I'm like, well, it doesn't think we need it. I still need it. Okay. So we got Visual Studio Code with a Python. We got Windows Terminal. Up, up. And then I want the fonts. Shout out to God Penis who suggested this before. I really enjoy it. I use a Yosepka Pixel because I don't really like the special like ligature, small, whatever. Like, sorry, not my cup of tea. But overall, I really enjoy this font. Uh, I find it very readable and I've been using the same across all the systems, including Mac when I was using it. And I find the consistency helps me actually focus. Although I am tempted to go and extract all, extract all, um, to go and replace my HDMI switch with a DisplayPort switch and hope that the subpixel font actually will work correctly. Because as it is, I am having quite a few problems. This will install Yosefka. Okay, this one is done. Oh. And then for SSH, this is the one I've been using. We encrypt SSH agent which supports SIGWIN and Windows Linux Socket, which is very handy. Um, and the page on SSH protocol, so essentially it works with nearly everything. Um, yes, it is support with chocolatey. I'm not using chocolatey simply because I never remember how to use it properly. I have not tried to build my own um, proper... Let me use this here. 
um, my proper um, chocolatey yeah no keep it I know it's fine it's not going to harm my device you'll see that anything it seems to be but it's installed from github seems to have the same problem because the next thing I'm going to download has the same issue and but it's less about development and more about my blogging so this is Win compose thank you to whoever suggested it at the time sorry I forgot from San Josedar best known for being one of the founders of Videoland um, oh this time it didn't work about that one okay fine um, there you go yes Windows didn't protect any PC run away that allows to use the um, compose key and the compose shortcuts on Windows just as much as you would do on Linux which by the way is once again better than on Mac I know that there are ways to get the same on Mac as well what can I say I, I know how to do that in Windows now I don't know how to do that in on Mac at least Mac eventually added support for um, the US alt ntl okay so win composing is installed and win crypt ssh is started yeah it's very started um, i didn't actually install it i just started it that's enough for me i think there is a yeah this shows the wsl like linux and hyper v and then the hyper v agent status no but that's handy i didn't know it was a thing um, because that's probably new when you have a wsl2 yes yes and the boot i hope that's in, yeah it's doing still giving me a very boot US LT NTL for those who don't know because they never had the need, like you, um, is a way to type extended Latin characters with compose keys. So come with dead keys. So for instance, if I were to type my surname, the last character is actually two times because if I press just the key. Required feature is not this, so I never remember which one of the required features. Give me just a second. Uh. Okay. Okay. Let's do one at a time. Let's go back to Windows Terminal for now. The yeah maybe WSL2 was a mistake. As I was saying, dark mode. I hate dark mode. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to change the settings of this except for loading this, which is the JSON configuration file, which is very verbose. Yeah, install the extension. As I was saying, like it's going to just go and enable all the extensions. So what I'm going to do custom scholar scheme and I'm just letting it paste in the color scheme I usually use. Terminal again, and did I make a mistake? Oh, yeah, I need to actually select it as well, right? Yeah, this one. Yeah. 
And yes, I usually just carry a copy of this, like a dot file, like, let's be honest, yes, it's a bit clunky. Linux dot files, they're not any different. Back to Windows Terminal. And we have a white with black text, which is what I like. Uh, is WSL. It's not install distribution. I need to switch this back to the other one, right? Yeah. Install features, manage up. Don't mean those features are enough. Do, do. Yeah, install that one. And does it require a boot? No, it does not. Yeah, no, let's try the WSL one. I think I made a mistake there because WSL two is hyper-V and I am inside hyper-V. And I know I tried this before and then I told myself There you go. And give it time to start the install. And yes, this is again white on black. I know it feels more like the old school. Yes, we used to have CRTs that were white on black or color on black or green on black or whatever else. My eyes cannot deal with it. Easy as that. Okay, new Unix username, new password. And there we are. Let me close this because as I said I don't like it. Not the settings, close this, close this. I think now Windows Terminal should automatically notice it. Yeah, there you go. Ta da! I can have my PowerShell and my Windows Terminal. And from the PowerShell, I can also SSH around. Um, so let me start my other machine. Yes. Okay. We'll generate some SSH key. We don't have SSH key right now, so let's start with um, no. right here. And if you look at this one, there are no public keys. But you can generate new keys. Um, let's say as for ninety six. Oh no, sorry. Let's do it ECDSA easier or maybe it should be five nine one nine. Mm-hmm. No plus phrase. To set up a target for the SSH flow because I forgot about that and I don't have a public key before. But lo and behold, we have Linux, so I can enter, well, I can find the file which is in csusersflame.ssh id ed so on the pub and look i'm in user slang i have my public key i'm going to send it to the other machine i 
in the most unix -y way possible. I'm just not cutting it. Oh, it's fireballed out, is it? Yeah, it is. Just a moment. Meantime, this was Studio Code, starting up. You can change the font. And they really like they just find all the settings. Preference, color team, open settings in the UI. The font is here. Use after fixed because that's the one I want. Change this first save, close, reopen. New file and use the FCAP. And that's what I find very handy to have exactly the same font across everything. Also, not default, just make it fast. Do I get my firewall now? Yes. And if I now I say search into it. password but if I ask for flame eyes very good and this is my usual gitter machine which is currently empty for reasons what do I have in mean nothing what I have in downloads gitter does it work from here it shouldn't see that's me for a password but because we have a win crypt ssh thing in show WSL settings, okay to copy, past, hmm. oh. show public key, yeah I have an update. As I say, I usually do this with the physical key. Mm -hmm. hmm. Not showing the public keys. And this is where I wish I had USB forwarding. Anyway, usually I get the SSH working from WSL as well. Not that in this case it doesn't really matter in any way because we have it outside. So, don't save. Extensions, remote, SSH. Yes, Microsoft actually gives you a remote SSH extension, which is awesome because now you can do this, remote SSH, connect to host, add new host, play mice at 123168, what was it? 184. Free. Add it to the standard SSH config. Connect to it. Still no access. Uh, we try. It's going to ask me what it is, I guess. Yeah, Linux. OK. 
okay, what's this one? Okay, what's this one right now? And here I am. I'm connected onto the other machine. This is not the same. So if I do uname dash a, does it say? No, it doesn't. But then C US release. This is my open source tumbleweed, not to be confused with uh, Ubuntu that is running over here. Completely different machine. Well, virtual machine. Uh, but that means I can still do everything normally. So I can do pip install pip. No, oh, this is an older version. And local bin is not in path, so I need to actually install that. But in the meantime, I can do well, I can do cold the pusher see? And then opening it remotely. So this file it, it works the same way as the Emacs tramp mode and damn it Emacs naming. Um, but I open the same thing, so I can do x path equal path call. Actually, I want to override it, so I want to put it here and home flame eyes the local bin close this terminal terminal new terminal it open ssh echo path tada pip install flask this is where things get even more interesting so start a flask example let me just remove some of the background noise here and don't close the tab move this away let's close this one and go Let's make the simplest app.py for Flask. Look, I want to install the recommended Python extension. Yes, yes, I do. Okay. Import Flask. App equal. Select Python interpreter. There's only 3.8 on that machine. That is 3.9 on this virtual machine, but the other virtual machine only has 3.8. Uh, class of flask example after route slash out left root return hello world pilot is not installed yeah sure install it and let's reformat this oh auto pilot is not installed use black it just installs it by itself. Reformat, save. And now fast. Uh, fast run. Your service is running on port 5000. Opening browser. It's not trying to connect to the IP address of the other virtual machine. VS Code is actually forwarding the port across by itself by SSH forwarding and just replicating it locally. So when you click on it, you have it open. You can do all the development without having to go crazy over, oh, how do I reach that machine that is somewhere else? I noticed that last week, well, two weeks ago, when I was doing my TV remote control, software defined remote control, I'm going to blog about that later. It was so freaking awesome of it just working out of the box. Like you didn't have to bother with most of the, anything else. Like it started plus and you were like, hey, you open a new port. Do you want to go and forward it? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so this part works awesome. Absolutely awesome in my opinion. And you can see that this is happening over localhost. It's not going remote. Yes, I could go remote most likely because I disabled the firewall on the OpenSUSE. Fine, like the OpenSUSE is where I just started my new Ghidra. And I could access it, but I did not access it right now. And you can see that I'm just SSHing into that. But let's do something different. Um, close remote connection. And let's connect to a different remote. New window in WSL. I'm in Ubuntu now. You can see that it's unpacking everything. Yes, I want to allow access. Um, don't show again. I don't want to use WSL2 right now. New terminal. Look, I'm on Ubuntu. Like I'm running Windows 10, I'm, I'm connecting to Ubuntu, and I have all the Ubuntu stuff. So sudo apt install git gcc. Yeah, I want to install everything. 
uh, so do a pity update. This is the thing that gets me all the time. It doesn't refresh by default. Also, by the way, if this is ever failing for you and you have a Cronus installed, it's likely a Cronus making it a pain in the neck with their filters. I don't think they fixed it yet, so I just disable half of our filters. And again, I have Windows Terminal open here, so I can even check what's going on. It's running normally. This is not even using WSL2, so it's not a virtual machine. This is actually the full Windows subsystem for Linux, which means it's likely slower. But this is a VM by itself anyway, so don't care. And if any time it has all the PowerShell running, right? And SSH. I guess technically I managed to, like, they fixed the bugs that I encountered the first time I tried this, so you will be able to use the Visual Studio Code with SSH remote using a YubiKey with just the YK11, PKCS11 provider with the beta version of the OpenSSH client and it will work, it will ask you for the pin, it will call it password, but it will be the pin and from there you can log in normally. I found that the WinCrypt works better because it also does the WSL forwarding, which works fine on my normal machine, and that allows me to push to GitHub directly instead of going through multiple steps. This is not even the problem right now, so let's not go on with that one. Oh yeah, I also want to install FFM tag there. Hmm? There are. No? Um, mm -hmm, da, 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 what's it called on this one? Oh, it's libw and uh, libaby codec developed, I guess. Just dev, okay. Dev I actually, yeah. Okay. I will never remember which one uses the bell and which one uses dev. There we go. Bring in the world, because why not? Let it run everything. GitHub.com, on paper, on paper. And now I can actually open the actual window. So now this is an entire window of Visual Studio Code. It's the third one because the previous one is over here. I'm going to close this one. This is opening the actual folder, the directory of AMP paper on the WSL with all the files visible over here. And if I open any of them, it will recommend the right extensions, which is in this case C, C++. Still has syntax highlighting, but it does more stuff with that. And yeah, Control Alt F is the formatting. I don't think it uses the same Clang formatting, which is a bit annoying because I really I, I need to find what the right configuration for this is. I'm fairly sure Code Editors has a way to do that. And if you haven't seen Code Editors, I think it's this one, right? No, Code Editor. Yeah, except the uh, editor config, sorry. 
and this allows configuring a bunch of parameters so that you uh, get the same style across all the various editors which by the way I'm very glad that it came out because I had fights on the FFmpeg mailing list back in the days of me trying to just set the dear locals for Emacs so that Emacs would get me the right style by default and not have to remember to change it afterwards because it's formatting it's not intended for human to fight about just tell me how you want it formatted and let a formatter do it so yes there are ways to do that um, and as you open more files it will still like start recommending you extensions for various well i think markdown is built in nowadays i think and yaml definitely is but more of these will also like i think the local cl will ask yeah we want to search marketplace for stuff that deal with yaml and like oh look at least syntax aligner. Like if you want this highlighting, you can get that. Um, and these are installed on the actual virtual machine because they call WSL in this case, but in the remote target as well as the local one. That thing is actually very handy. So this takes care of most of the stuff I do on Windows 10 because I don't really I don't develop for Windows per se myself I haven't had the need to do that in a number of years I haven't had customers paying me for Windows development I used to um, I used to develop on Windows on Visual Basic for a little while because it was needed like it was requested um, I've done Visual C Sharp like a lot I really enjoy C Sharp as a language before link you I don't like link you but C sharp as a language I like the whole idea and the whole setup but doesn't mean that I like the runtime or the standard library but you take what you can um, I don't plenty of development on Borland C++ but thankfully for the past nine years I haven't touched any Windows development platform at all um, or any UI platform except for web and even that not publicly um, which again I'm glad of I it's not a thing that I enjoy I'm glad that there are people who do enjoy it I'm not disparaging it like I'm all the power to the people who can deal with JavaScript I can't um, it's just me so I don't I, I know I could install Clang and the SDK and have all of the thing work out of the box on that one. I haven't done that on my game station. I haven't done that on my laptop. If I ever needed all of that, I would probably use the Hyper-V um, image that Microsoft provides that already includes Visual Studio pre-installed, which is definitely faster to do than setting up everything else. But Visual Studio Code with WSL remotes and SSH remotes and all these kind of things, it's actually extremely powerful. You, it's hard to describe the the, the 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 ergonomics of knowing. Hey, I have one machine here, and I can literally connect to everything else, and have it work just as well as having it accessed locally. Yes, Emacs has been doing that for thirty years, probably. I don't know how old the Trump mode is. And again, Emacs, naming, really. Um, Trump mode is awful. I, I used it. I used it heavily. I used to use it for nearly everything I was working on when doing sysadmin jobs. But it is so unreliable and it doesn't feel like you're working on something locally because half of the time it's just SSHing back and forth with base64 encoded stuff. Now, Visual Studio Code is more aggressive because it actually go and install stuff. So if I was to re-SSH to, to, to do this one, and I'm not connected yet, so let me reconnect to this one. Connect current host to win, and you see it's already safe that I don't have to bother. Actually, I, if you look at recent, you, you have the various options here. If you open a file there, 
Yeah, I don't need to open that board. Let me open a folder on the remote and I'm going to open Flask example, which is the one I had earlier. There I am, that's my app.py. By the way, if I had a um, Python virtual environment set up for this, it would have recognized it. And it would have installed Black and PyLint on the virtual environment, not on the user level. I don't care. I, the, the, the user level is fine. But it will have. Now, if I PS acts on this one, there you go. It's running the VS Code binary. It's running, it's running node.js, but it, it it's more involved, but it provides you an absolute local quality level of control. And that I really enjoy, unlike Trump. Um, and again, Emacs naming. The other thing that I, it's hard for me to demonstrate here in this setup, but for projects that span multiple Git repositories, I usually have a devout repos directory with all the repos together. And if I'm spanning multiple projects, I end up maybe gathering them together if there are a lot of them, but usually just knowing that they're there. You have workspaces, so you can add multiple folders on the same remote to the same workspace and just access it directly with one click. And I do that for Home Assistant and ESP Home. So I have one workspace, I open that and like boom, all of the files together. And if I'm looking for them, it's very handy to think to do things like control P to find a file. And this directory only has one file, so let's go to this one. If I do P image process, there you go. The whole command palette is very powerful, more user friendly than Emacs. Like, I used to be a Emacs user for many, many years, and nowadays I'm a convert. I like the palette. I like the option of searching for stuff in, by name when I forget what it is instead of trying to forget to, to figure out, okay, which function name would they use for this particular feature and can I find the line key? And also it shows you the line key next to it. So the format one that I've been using, format document, it's shift alt f. And yes, you can technically set it up so that when you save, it automatically formats. I find formatting it by hand when I want to make sure that the thing is formatted the way I want works slightly better than for me than other stuff. But hey, it works. And yeah. And you can see that it's still the same font everywhere. And I like that. I like the consistency. It, it makes my head not get confused about what symbol is what. I may just be an old man who starts getting confused by different characters. So yeah, that's it. Like as I said, I set this up very quickly and like I can get a new terminal, I can do auto reconf. Like I I To be honest, it's actually harder at this point to do this. Also, don't forget your password. I haven't figured out how to reset the password when you forget it on the WSL. Now, to be fair, I don't usually keep anything in the WSL directories because I don't care. Um, but yeah, I just destroyed it and recreated it last night. The other thing that I did before, and I'm glad I'm not going to need to do anymore thanks to the WinCrypt SSH agent thingy, which didn't work this time around, I don't know why, I need to look at the source code for that one, is the, um, let's see, if it, oh, probably XSLT proc is not installed. I'm betting on that. No, pkg config the dev is not installed. Okay. Let me make sure XSLT you can fix that. No. Uh, Ruby PKG config. No, that's not the one I'm looking for. PKG config. 
Did you just speak as you come through? Maybe. And yes, I need to finish converting this to Meson because seriously, this is not going to go anywhere. Um, what I used to do to handle the, it, it's a bit of a mess, to handle unpaper to push it to GitHub from WSL before I had been crypt was I was quote unquote publishing it or pushing it to the GitHub desktop folder repository um, dot git dot git directory in the checkout from the github desktop app and then from there pushing it to github proper and awful and not going to do that ever again thankfully um let's see i this one oh yeah git integration source control There are no changes right now, but you can do all the views, view source control repositories, and paper, git, main, refresh, all of this stuff. If we want to do the same over here, we can do that from the desktop. GitHub.com. There we are. And I can even start a Visual Studio code from that directory. There we are. This is local, it's not going to work because, of course, they don't have Mason. But da, 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 more of these. I don't have all the dependencies installed on Windows. I don't have, like, I have not tried to do a build of on paper for Windows in forever. But that's a thing. It works. It can do it. Most of the stuff I get on Windows is Python. So that works out of the box. And you can see here the recent, like, the remote control. And the other funny one with Home Assistant is the way Home Assistant allows you, well, you're using the Home Assistant appliance and you set it up with a supervisor, you can install the additional component that allows you to have um, a Samba share of the configuration directory. Of course, XSLT proc is not installed. And the configuration directory includes the custom components, not just for Home Assistant, but for, for ESP Home as well. And Visual Studio Code has no problem with just connecting you to a Samba share and opening it normally as if it was a local folder and even giving you a terminal there if you want to run Python on it. And so you can actually test your code on the home assistant that you install on Windows to just start it up. It does work but for the PyTest and stuff if you're writing tests for it. And again, it's completely transparent you wouldn't know you are not acting on a local folder. Create a make file, disable dependency tracking, because... Oh, uh, I think I know why. Because this is WSL1 and it has some timestamp problems. And now I can make... And if, yeah, the Ubuntu.com with WSL is not really thought to be used as a, maybe that's why I didn't have to disable the dependency tracking. Um, the, the Ubuntu that gets installed by default on WSL is not meant for developers. And it's very visible. And there you go, me. You don't have to go through any virtual machine on, Win on Linux only environments because well, WSL is there. Um, it's a nice bootstrapping environment. I'm not going to say that we should stop developing Linux desktops. Please, let's not do that. Please, let's actually keep developing Linux des desktops and make them better and better. 
But in the meantime, if your option is between macOS and Windows, well, maybe give it the both of using Windows. Um, particularly if what you're going to do is complain about macOS being expensive, because yes, it is, like the machines that it runs on. This is definitely cheaper to start with. And it mostly works on anything, still. There you go. Um, that's my current setup for most of these things. And yeah, feel free to ask further questions here, Twitter, or anything else. And I will try to gather you all together in a blog. I may or may not publish this on YouTube just to have a copy, given that Twitch deletes them. And I didn't realize that, but I have copies of all of them. Um, and after that, I'll follow. Okay, so um, folks, thank you very much for staying here and seeing me rant on on a Windows install. If you want more, just let me know. And yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.